can't change anything, as you know. All we can do is just go with what we are. You can't go with what you are. Have you read the papers? Do you know what everybody says? It's suicide. You've seen him. You know how strong he is. You can't win. So in the not too distant future, there's going to be a new kind of biography about Stan Lee called True Believer. We talked about it not too long ago on the channel, kind of about the, the narrative that was being pushed by the art, the um, the writer. He, he did an article not too long ago. He's obviously beat it up, turned it into a biography. And I guess Roy Thomas, who used to, to work under Stanley, would some would definitely call him a protege of Stanley, had an advanced copy of the book, and he's he's come back in defense of Stanley, sort of. Uh, about maybe some of the ideas that are being pushed in that uh, biography. Last time we did a video, I got a lot of feedback. A lot of people really think that that Stanley went out of his way to, to screw over Jack Kirby and other creators. Obviously, it appears Jack Kirby agrees with them. But I think Roy Thomas brought up a lot of key points that I wanted to bring up here with with my good friend, Comics by Perch. How you doing, Perch? Well, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. So... I guess we have to come into this to the premise. Do you have to take a side in Jack versus Stan? Can we not appreciate both creators and, and maybe come to the conclusion that maybe both of them were a little bit right and a little bit wrong in all this? Yeah. I, I mean, I hope, I mean, so I hope everybody can appreciate that, that both contributed to comics in, in different ways and powerful ways. We, we wouldn't have the comic industry we have today. And maybe that's that's there's a better way to say that. <laughs> so we wouldn't have great memories of some amazing comics. <laughs> maybe it's not good to tag them with the comic industry of today. Uh, both of them have done amazing work. Uh, Kirby has contributed to comics and art and art styles, and and there's so many people who use it for inspiration. People who just love what he's done, and that you can't take that away from. At the same time, uh, Stan Lee, as as both uh, you know, did come up with creative ideas, did absolutely pitch and market. Uh, comics. I mean, if you look at the state of marketing in comics today, I, I, both Marvel or DC would would wish Stanley was around uh, right now to to help out. Uh, it is it both contributed massively to comics, and I, I don't think you have to pick a one is good, one is evil take. So one of the the key points that Roy Thomas brings up, he's like, this is he said, she said, he's, and he said the 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 writer puts a lot more veracity or credence behind Stan or Jack Kirby's stories versus Stan Lee's, but I think really you can come to the conclusion that the the more extreme takes that Jack Kirby had about Stan Lee weren't completely true, that he was underselling what Stan Lee did. And some of the, the more extreme takes Stan Lee had as far as co-creating these characters also wasn't true, that he wasn't probably giving full credit to, to Jack Kirby and some of the other creators. I think we can we can agree on that that you know, both of them wanted to probably not give the other the credit that they, they deserved overall. Yeah, I, I think, you know, and, and Kirby's story softened a little bit uh, before he died. He he definitely uh, kind of came back on some of his more extreme Stan did nothing statements. I think he he changed his story. I, I think a lot of people are carrying forward uh, Kirby at his most extreme today, that, that Stan Lee was completely useless and did absolutely nothing and he did everything. Uh, because and lots of people have debunked that, uh, but, you know, people who are in the office at the time, uh, certainly some of Roy Thomas's comments here and and Kirby himself. Again, please, if you're if you're all in the boat of Stanley was was useless and did nothing, please look into Kirby's uh, kind of end of life statements. He, he did change his stance a bit. Um, but at the same time, you're absolutely right. Uh, Stanley over grabbed things. Uh, Stanley joked about over grabbing things at different times, but it was always, you know, Stanley's kind of style was, was uh, often to kind of credit himself with the moon with everything. And then he'd joke about how, you know, I think he, he maybe either he assumed that people knew he was overreaching or maybe at different times he believed it or he didn't, uh, who knows. But um, the reality is, yes, yeah, Stanley did contribute. Jack Kirby did contribute. I think we've gone through several eras of time where the artist was minimized and then held up and then minimized again. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're seeing this whole thing play out. I, I think this book, um, and especially I agree completely with, with Roy Thomas's comments um, and these quotes that I see here, it, it is, it, it is uh, all one-sided. It's, it's taking a, he said, she said situation and saying it's a hundred percent this guy. And, and just, that's not how the world works. So one of the big, 
you know, disputes between the two is the the credits for creating the Fantastic Four. Yeah, I think Jack Kirby's stance was kind of like it was all me. Stan Lee's was was kind of like it was, it was all me, and then I, it's probably somewhere in the middle. And I guess in the book, they they one of the ways they discredit that because there are two pieces of paperwork that provide some level of of proof that Stan Lee was part of the creative process as far as the Fantastic Four, as far as partial synopses of two of the first eight issues, and specifically issue one and issue number eight. And one of the ways they discredit the the first synopsis that w was created in the 60s, but apparently, according to an assistant that used to work for Jack Kirby, said it was created after the fact. Yeah. And and, and I think, you know, Jed, going through everything that was said, I suspect Kirby did do more for Fantastic Four than Stan. If you've got like a pie chart of contributions, I suspect... Kirby did a lot more. And I, I say that from the standpoint of, you know, Stan was used to writing very kind of loose outlines and, and loose material. And then Kirby would fill in a lot of the details. Both admit that and, and talk about how that's the way it was. So if we're taking that as true, then by, you know, just by deduction, by following it out, it indicates that this title Kirby did more because that's how a lot of the comics were being done. Um, it's also true that we have had times where, uh, you know, scripts or notes would come in late after the book uh, is is either done or mostly complete um, synopsis items. And we know that's true as well because various artists, more than just Kirby, would complain about having to do uh, changes or areas where the synopsis would conflict the comic and it creates a last minute chaos and everything else. So I, I believe this story that the synopsis uh, came in late, but what I don't agree with is that does not mean that zero contribution happened before. Um, it was also you know, very, very common that Stan and other writers, frankly, would come up with you know notes and ideas and a sketch and an outline uh, at the beginning, and that this would be delivered to the artist, and the artist would then you know interpret it and do things, and the synopsis would then come in later that would tighten up the script and, and cause some rewrites. This is this is fairly normal for that time period. So I think this story can be true, but the conclusion that's being drawn from it is, so Stanley did nothing and tried to kind of glom onto it at the end is incorrect. It's misunderstanding the process. And Roy Thomas has his own recollection. He saw this, the partial synopsis that Stanley let him see it. And he mm -hmm. said that he presented it to him before it was ever controversy over who was the creator behind the Fantastic Four before that before there was an ever a debate he asked he was asking him some questions about you know how how Marvel kind of kicked off in the new newest golden age where they had really picked up a popularity he presented that to him it was uh, his his notes or his partial synopsis for issue number one and according to Roy Thomas he said well if this was a forgery you know it, it was weird that he would forge something with so many details that clearly Jack Kirby had changed you know the yeah. The, the invisible woman would never become visible. <laughs> and, he's, and it specifically said there in, in a note, Stan said, Jack, we need to talk about this later because this might not be feasible. There are also some um, you know, specific reference that I believe Reed Richards wanted to go to, to, the, to Mars, whereas in the first issue, it was just vaguely presented that they wanted to go into outer space. So there's some details. He said, well, if, if this was a forgery, like he kind of makes himself not look smart because it, it's quite apparent Jack Kirby changed a lot. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I agree. And, and Roy Thomas's recollection, I think, is is again, it, it fits the story. But it's, I mean, under rooting all this is kind of this this strange obsession people have with all or nothing, mm -hmm. which is a, a ridiculous place to to stand for. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Jack Kirby uh, was a master. Clearly uh, introduced a lot of things. Clearly did a lot of work here. And, and he should be credited highly. You don't have to erase Stan's contributions down to zero. That's, that's ludicrous. I, I think people who obsess about that kind of stuff are nuts. Uh, it, 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 doesn't, it, 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 it adds nothing. And I think there's, there's more than enough evidence, including what Roy Thomas says here, that uh, this, uh, you know, Stan did contribute. And, the, uh, and, and kind of this, this book seems intent on portraying Stan not just as, as evil, but but useless, dumb, have no creative ideas, contributed to nothing. It's it's taking this extreme position on Stan that is is not necessary. You know, it's it's 
I, I, I don't, you know, I don't know what the point is. It doesn't lift, mm -hmm. it doesn't lift Kirby up as much as it tears Stan down. And that seems to be the point of this book. And, you know, there's also the fact that maybe not at the very first issue, but in time, I believe within the first year or two of Fantastic Four being published, Jack Kirby was co-credited as producing the comic book with equal billing as Stanley. Uh -huh. you know, they end up changing that over time. I believe, uh, you know, Stanley also, you know, according to Roy Thomas, did, did try to get artist pay and things like that. Now, I believe one of the biggest contentions that, that comic book fans have is that Stanley, over the course of time, benefited more financially and got the lion's share of credit over the course of time. But really, there was that one article, which I believe is, is from the New Yorker or whatever, where it, it kind of pointed out that Stan Lee was, was kind of the master behind, main, mastermind behind, I believe it was Timely at the time, but it ended up becoming Marvel Comics and Jack Kirby was like the grizzled veteran, you know, keeping the bullpen working. And it caused some seeds of distrust. Now, at, when they both died, neither of them had like the copyrighted the copyright for any of the characters. It's not like Stan Lee had the copyrights for those characters because of the, the disputed claims. Yeah, I, 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 again, these these stories don't particularly add up. Um, I mean, all these different threads don't all come together in a way that that makes complete sense. And again, it, it makes me wonder what what's the story that's trying to be painted here, and what's the point? You know. Well, and then the the final thing I will say is, I think the reason that Stan Lee is associated so heavily with Marvel Comics is because he never he never quit. Jack yeah. Kirby is the one that left the company. So Stanley continued to be the face of the company. Now, if that that one, that initial article that that really sowed some some jealousy there, if they had identified Jack Kirby as the mastermind, is and Stanley is you know is is just a contributor, maybe Stanley quits and Jack Kirby is the face of Marvel Comics. Probably but not. I think, yeah, it could be, but I mean, this, this is Stan's job. I mean, Stan's job was to market the company. It was to to be a, the showman, a job that Jack Kirby repeatedly talked about hating. I mean, he he talked about hating being put in front of people like this, and he, he I, Jack, this was not what Jack Kirby wanted to do. Um, he was not that kind of public face kind of persona. He was not that that carnival barker type personality that Stan was. That was his job. Um, people can dislike people in marketing. They can be annoying. I get it. But it is a function. And so Stan Lee was the evangelist and the marketer for that company. So, of course, he was in the front. And if not Stan, it, you know, in theory, it would have been somebody else. Or it would have been nobody and the company wouldn't have succeeded. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, but he never left the company. So he ended up being and, the face yeah. of the company for a very, very long time. Absolutely. Nobody forced Jack Kirby to, to leave Marvel Cop. No, he, some he, people would say, you know, it was because of Stan Lee, but for, for quite some time afterwards, Stan Lee was still flummoxed as to why Jack Kirby was mad at. Yeah, I, I be th because I think Stan Lee understood the jobs for what they were to some extent. And he didn't, uh, you know, and Stan Lee, from all reports, uh, was not somebody with a lot of self-awareness either. He was. And this is probably uh, it's a negative to him. Um, you know, I. I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, it, it, we'll look down the comments after your video is published and people are going to be like, oh, so you think Stanley is perfect? No, no, no not not at all. Uh, it's just I don't think it's Stanley is equals zero and Jack Kirby equals 100 percent. That's that's, I think, crazy talk. Uh, you make the Mount Rushmore of comic books and you got Stanley and Jack Kirby up there. Oh, 100 percent. You do. Uh, Stanley, I, I think whether you liked him or disliked him, Stanley created a lot of contributions for comics and those can't just be brushed aside. Um, no matter how much you may hate Stanley or you not like his personality, you don't like the function of marketing, or if you think he buried the artist, he still contributed a lot to Marvel's success. And Marvel, frankly, uh, would not have had anywhere close to the success in the 60s if Stanley had not been there. Similarly, Marvel would not have had a lot of success in the 80s if Jim Shooter had not been there. There are, there are people who've had roles at different times in the company's history that have, uh, have helped helped it grow uh, people who are not always the artists. And, and I think to, to discuss otherwise is just being silly. My point is you can admire both men. You can yes. acknowledge that they're probably a little bit wrong about the other one. Sure. Hey, they both oversold probably what they did in the end. It didn't give the other one enough credit, but they're both key, key contributors. 
and you don't have to take one side or the other. Friends, yeah. you know, friends and colleagues disagree. It was between them. It doesn't have to, to roll over and be, be and be between the fans. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, my, that's kind of my I, point. Is there I, anything I, else you wanted to, to say before we wrap this up, Perch? No, no, I agree with you. I mean, it's it's a you hear me stumbling over my words. It's a weird situation. Um, and I it's it's to me, it seems like a useless one. To to have this argument, kind of like you said, it's it it doesn't matter the contributions, the exact percentage. I mean, if you want to get into that, maybe it's a good intellectual debate. But the reality is, both men contributed massively to comics. I like that Mount Rushmore analogy; it fits. And uh, you know, it, it, at this point, why they're both those men have died? Just just let it let it go. There's there's not we don't need to pick up the scab. I agree. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.